We'll see if he's getting ready to speak. A long holiday weekend. Instead, a little after three in the afternoon, we had something happen that we never would wish on anyone. The Texas Department of Public Safety made, a, made an initial traffic stop at about 3.15 on I-20 yesterday afternoon, and their trooper was shot during that traffic stop. Our subject then proceeded into the city of Odessa, and over a period of time, created several more victims. Initially, it was thought that there may have been multiple shooters, and that is because at some point uh, this subject changed the vehicle. We are now confident that there was just the one actor. This is an ongoing investigation. It is active. There are still multiple crime scenes. There are being worked. There are no definitive answers as to motive or reasons at this point. But we are fairly certain that this subject did act alone. You'll notice that I'm not naming this subject. And there's a reason for that. I refuse to. I'm not going to give him any notoriety for what he did. We'll provide that information to you, but not in this public stage. As we stand, 22 people are injured, three of them law enforcement. Very, very sadly, seven people have been killed, seven of our citizens. Those seven victims have ranged in ages from 15 years to 57. Very sincerely, I say to those families, I offer my apologies and my condolences. My heart aches for all of them. I ask the city of Odessa, the state of Texas, and the nation to please lift up your hearts and send us your prayers. I thank everyone who has already done that. There has been a tremendous outpour. It, just to the local audience, please, with, with your show of support, you're going to the crime scenes and you're dropping off food and, and water, and that is much appreciated, but it is also hindering the investigation. So, so please, if we could stop that and just bring that stuff to a central location here at UTPB would be great. Also want to thank all the support we've gotten from um, other local state and federal law enforcement agencies. Uh, the outpouring of resources has been amazing. Um, the cooperation while this incident was ongoing was amazing. Um, please understand this is, is a, a different type of active shooter that we were involved with because he was mobile. And that, that creates some very special type of issues. So my, my thanks go out to our, our brothers and, and sisters in Midland with the Ector County Sheriff's Office and the Midland County Sheriff's Office and the University of Texas Police Department and the Ector County Independent School District Police Department. And I just, I mean, I could sit here all day and name those agencies, those local agencies and state agencies that, that helped out. And, and uh, my heart is just filled with gratitude to each and every one of those professionals. So. Close, I would invite everyone, the community, to, enjoy, to join us here this evening at UTPB for our prayer vigil, which will start at 7 p.m. Thank you. Well, Chief, thank you. Thank you. We're proud of you. As you all know, the lives of the people of Odessa and the entire Permian Basin region have been shattered over the past 24 hours. Hearts have been broken. We want people of the Permian Basin to know that all of Texans stand with you and embrace you at this time of challenge. We are here today 
and we'll be here every day until this community is pieced back together. But we know that words alone are inadequate. Words must be met with action. I want to thank the police chief for his tireless efforts over the past 24 hours in the robust and her heroic response that he and his fellow law enforcement agencies and officers utilized to bring the gunman down and to quickly de-escalate the challenge and to literally save lives that could have been lost had it not been for the action of the collaborative effort by law enforcement. Along those lines, we cannot thank enough all of the first responders from all of the law enforcement agencies involved in this process to ensure that they were going to be able to do what was necessary to restore safety in this community. As governor, I particularly want to thank the Texas Department of Public Safety for what they did. We talk about this all the time, and that is there is no such thing as a routine stop. The way all this began yesterday was with what would be categorized as a routine stop by the Texas Department of Public Safety, only for that stop to immediately escalate into gunfire by this killer with a DPS officer being injured in the process. So I appreciate the way that the Texas Department of Public Safety steps up every single day, always prepared, knowing that their lives are on the line any stop they make, ensuring safety in our communities across the state. I also want to express my gratitude to the incredible health care providers in this region. They had to deal with probably what was their most challenging day ever. And they stepped up with collective calm and poise to make sure that they were able to heal the wounded as quickly as possible. I want to express my deepest sorrow for the families who have lost a loved one and for all the victims who have been wounded. The hurt you feel is incalculable. But you must hold on to the hope that you can also have. And we're seeing this already with the family of one of the victims. Some of you know that one of the victims is a 17-month-old child. And moments before coming in here, I received a text from the mother of this 17-month-old. Uh, I want to read you the text of what this mother wrote. She said, quote, thank you all for praying. This is all of our worst nightmare. But thank God she's alive and relatively well. She goes on to say that toddlers are funny because they can get shot but still want to run around and play. She says that we are thanking God for that. Her mouth is pretty bad, but will heal and can be fixed. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like her jaw was hit, just lip, teeth, and tongue. She is having surgery tomorrow to remove the shrapnel from her chest and to fix her lip and mouth and to get a better look at her tongue. We are thanking God for healing her and appreciate continued prayers. Well, I want her family to know that they can be assured of those prayers today, tomorrow, and every day and time. as that young child continues her pathway to healing. Let me say this. I have been to too many of these events as governor, the first one I went to was after the shooting in downtown Dallas to kill police officers as well as others. Then there was Sutherland Springs where 26 people were killed. Then there was Santa Fe High School where 
10 people were killed. And then less than a month ago, there was a shooting in El Paso. Well, I'm heartbroken by the crying of the people of the state of Texas. I'm tired of the dying of the people of the state of Texas. Too many Texans are mourning. Too many Texans have lost their lives. The status quo in Texas is unacceptable, and action is needed. After the shooting at Santa Fe High School, I signed more than 15 laws to make our schools safer from shooting attacks. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting in El Paso, I've worked with the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker, as well as legislators. I've also worked with the victims as well as advocacy groups. We have been working on drafting solutions that can be taken by legislators as well as solutions that can be taken by the Governor and the Executive Branch in Texas. Solutions that address racist, uh, take, uh, uh, racist hate attacks like what happened in El Paso. Solutions that will address keeping our community safer. Now in the aftermath of this shooting and the unique aspects of this shooting, we must broaden our efforts to address the tragedy that has befallen Odessa. And we must do so quickly. We need solutions that will keep guns out of the hands of criminals like the killer here in Odessa, while also ensuring that we safeguard Second Amendment rights. And we must do it fast. Most of all, in the aftermath of what happened here in Odessa, we must replicate what we have seen in El Paso, Southern Spring, Santa Fe, and in Dallas. And that is, we must do what Texans do best. In times of tragedy, we unite. We come together. We support each other. We reinvigorate our community with the love that we have for one another. And knowing the Permian Basin the way that I do, I know that is exactly what's going to happen here in Odessa, in Midland, in the entire region. So thank you all as a community for what you will be doing to helping each other. And thank you to the heroic law enforcement officers and first responders for everything that you've already done. continue with this press conference, first I'd like to echo the, and, and applaud the governor for all the work he's doing, trying to bring a lot of attention, needed attention, overdue attention onto the active shooter scenes that we unfortunately work and having to respond to. Uh, as a regional director of the West Texas region, having to work two active shooter scenes in a matter of 28 days is unheard of for, for and this, especially all in the West Texas region. So when we have things like this, incidents like this, it's important that we reach out to our partners and we all, as you can see, those behind me and those on the table with me, we can't do it alone. And it's important that we continue to focus unified and collaboratively in, in fighting the, helping the governor fight the fight and we will continue to do so. Just want to give an update on our trooper that was shot yesterday, uh, at the grace of God that he survived the shooting. He, had, he went through a couple of hours surgery yesterday and the doctors left there are very optimistic that he will have a recovery, uh, a full recovery after obviously some a road ahead of, of some rehabilitation, but he will be fine. Um, at, at the onset of this call, we had troopers, as you know, who not only stopped the suspect, we had many in the arena helping uh, Odessa PD, and, uh, and we brought in all the resources we have available, uh, not only in law enforcement, but also on our non-commissioned side. Victims counselors are working behind the scenes with the Odessa Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation as well, uh, ensuring that those, those families that are, that are suffering the losses uh, are, are definitely educated and compensated as the law allows. And, and thanks to the governor and the Office of Attorney General, we'll make sure that, that all monies uh, are made available to the families and uh, to help them in the road recovery. Thank you.
along those lines, I, I want to emphasize one thing uh, first is uh, gratitude to the legislators from this region who can be very helpful in the effort of making sure that the victims and others get the resources they need. They're behind me and I want to recognize the, the senator from this region, which is Senator Kel Seliger and the uh, House of Representatives member Brooks Landgraf, uh, as well as uh, regional uh, representative senators, uh, Senator Perry and Representative Craddock. They can all be extremely helpful in working with uh, local families and local communities and local schools as well as the health care providers uh, in providing information to us at the state level. So I urge you uh, to be active uh, in the next uh, day, weeks, and months to come uh, in working with these uh, representatives and senators uh, to make sure that all of your needs are raised and addressed. Uh, with that, we'll pass it over to uh, the federal official involved. Hello, my name is Christopher Combs. I'm the FBI Special Agent in Charge. Uh, first, I want to commend the local law enforcement effort and the state effort here. Uh, there is no question that these are the true heroes. In the midst of a man driving down the highway shooting at people, local law enforcement and state troopers pursued him and stopped him from possibly going into a crowded movie theater and having an, another event of mass violence. I think that's the story of law enforcement that should be conveyed, of how heroic uh, the chief's men and women are. So I, I want to commend them on that. Uh, the FBI is here as we are now uh, almost every other week, supporting our state and local partners on an active shooter. We are now at every two weeks, almost every two weeks, an active shooter in this country. Uh, the FBI responds to them all to support our state and local partners. Here in Odessa, we have 130 FBI personnel supporting the chief, with help also from DEA and ATF and the Postal Service. There's another 45 federal agents here. So I have pledged all of federal law enforcement to support the chief and the commander that we can help them on this. I know your questions are probably, is there a connection to terrorism in this? At this point, I can tell you, but we do not believe, we do not believe that there is any connection to any domestic or international terrorism. But we are still working through that. We're conducting searches at this exact moment in time to make sure that there is nobody else even possibly connected with this. Uh, I support the Chief's uh, announcement. We do believe this is a single shooter. This was not a multi-shooter event. We have worked very closely in the past with DPS and the Texas Rangers. In fact, the very same team that worked at the Sutherland Springs uh, mass shooting is the team that's here from the Rangers, along with the FBI team that did that crime scene as well. So the connection between the FBI, the DPS, Odessa police, uh, is built on unfortunate experience of working together. So we are all working together to make sure that this community is as safe as it possibly can be. And we will be here for the duration of the time that the chief needs our services. And unfortunately, we will then get ready to go to the next active shooter which is an unfortunate statement to make, but it seems like that's what we do. We respond to one after another of these horrible events. And we will always be here to support our local partners and help them through these horrible tragedies that we've seen here in Texas and across the country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A few questions. Chief, could I ask you, do you believe that the gunman was going to go you know, there's no way of absolutely knowing that, but um, it, it begs the question, why, why go to the theater if you're not planning on entering the theater? And please understand that on a Saturday afternoon in Odessa, Texas, that is one of the mo most crowded places to be. Do you know what his initial motive was uh, when he got that official stop? I, I do not. At this point, we do not. Is there any reason to believe that this could have been a planned attack? Again, the investigation is still ongoing, and there's there's a lot of questions that we just don't have answers to at this point. Do you feel that? Can you describe the moment that shootout outside the movie theater? Can you describe that shootout? How long did it last? Did the shooter have a chance to load? Was he saying anything to the officers that were there? Again, you know, all that is still under investigation. Uh, there are some videos that are are out there, but I'm not going to get into that incident at this point. Just point of order, we're gonna we're gonna call on people to, 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 to raise their hand and 
and it will call on you. Chief Kripke, there was also another crime scene you responded to in front of Rapid Stadium where an eyewitness told us that a blue pickup truck was shot by a police officer and that it was involved in a chase earlier that evening. Do you know that scene is connected to the uh, shooting I had earlier today? And if not, can you still tell us what happened in that situation? I, I have no information about the incident that you're talking about. Okay. Chief? What was the firearm used in the shooting, and how did you suspect it came in? Okay, uh, the firearm was an AR-type weapon. Uh, and as far as how he obtained it, that is still under investigation. Why did he make the stop in the first place? Why did he stop in the first place? Um, he stopped for a simple traffic violation. By uh, DPS. By DPS for failed to signal uh, required distance. Do you have any criminal records? What? I'm sorry? He's got, I believe there is some uh, criminal record attached to his driver license uh, that I'm sure that'll surface later. Is the suspect right here? Right here. Question for the governor. By, by coincidence today, a bunch of new gun laws went into effect in Texas that a lot of people see as weakening gun laws in Texas. What do you say to people who look at that and wonder if Texas is going the wrong direction to stopping more shootings? Well, for example, one of the, the laws that went into effect, and some deal with issues like this, and that is, uh, laws uh, that ensure that uh, school marshals, will, more school marshals will be able to have guns to, to keep schools safer. So some of these laws are, were enacted for the purpose of making our community safer. Is Texas doing enough to restrict guns like they are 15? Well, what, what we have been doing, uh, in, especially in the aftermath of the shooting in El Paso, we've been meeting daily. Uh, in part uh, with members of the legislature, in part with victims, in part with members of the community, in part with our federal counterparts. Uh, and we've been uh, hammering out on a daily basis new additional solutions uh, that we'll, we will be working to offer up, uh, some by the governor, some by the executive branch, some by the, the legislature. Uh, but these will be new and different solutions that will uh, work to de-escalate gun violence in Texas. Does it increase the sense of urgency to have two incidents like this within a month? Absolutely. Is the suspect from Odessa? Is the suspect from Odessa? The suspect has a, an Ector County address. Wow. In the front and glasses. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, do you know of any reason why the subject would have been uh, resisted being stopped? For example, were there outstanding warrants or unresolved uh, uh, criminal matters with him? As far as you know? As far as I know, there were, there were no active warrants. No, we can't I, I, actually because uh, oh, it is it's a very chaotic <laughs> situation when this when this these things happen and that is all being pieced together as we speak. Governor Abbott, um, one of the things that you said is that more must be meant for action. One of the things that unified the shootings that you just mentioned, uh, Dallas, Southern Rim Springs, El Paso, Odessa, is an AR style rifle. Is it time to ban these kinds of weapons? This is the kind of thing that uh, legislators are already talking about. It's one of the topics that was raised uh, during the roundtable discussions that we had in El Paso. Uh, I do want to point out, however, I, I was going to say I do want to point out, however, that uh, some of the shootings uh, have not involved uh, AR. It's very important to understand that the shooting that took place at Santa Fe High School did not. Uh, the the largest, yeah, they involved a, a shotgun and a handgun, as well as ID. The, the largest mass shooting we had in the state of Texas was at Luby's. Uh, in Central Texas, involved only handguns. So the, uh, we, I'm telling you that we're going to look. We're, let me just answer your question. We're going to look at every issue. There's no issue that we will not look at, and we're going to be working with legislators to find out what the best solutions are for Texas. Well, where's she going to go with the green right here? Would you say that every law enforcement officer behind you would say that they would rather go up against a person with a handgun than lady who's shooting at them rather than someone with and the, the people we also talk to are law enforcement officers. Okay. Okay. Right here, right here, right here. 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 Again, well over 15 scenes. I mean, so I mean, it, it, it takes time to process that many scenes. And with someone who has uh, AR in their car like that, is 
not a concern that maybe you guys stopped him from actually committing a mass shooting, or you know, was there any kind of indication that maybe um, this was going to escalate to something like this? You know, there's no way of knowing without talking to him, and we can't talk to him. Um, but again, it, it's he showed up at a at a movie theater, which which would tend to sh show his motives. Was we're gonna go. Was, we're gonna go with the last three questions. We're gonna go with the lady in the green shirt, the man in the green shirt, and the green shirt behind him, and that'll be done. Go ahead and ask the question. Yes, sir. Um, first and foremost, you know, thank you guys for everything you've done. Uh, I know there is no perfect answer as far as how to combat these particular mass shootings because they're unpredictable. But we spoke with a man yesterday who was a big, a person that was in the theater during the whole evacuation process. Um, he was disturbed and he was wondering, is there a reason why uh, an evacuation was initiated rather than a lockdown? And will this, uh, I guess, help you guys in the future make those types of decisions? Um, it, the situation was so fluid. At that point, this, this person was driving from location to location to location to location. Um, lockdown, evacuation, uh, you know, two sides of the same coin, I think. Um, you just don't have enough personnel to lock down every location in this city. You, you just don't. So you do the best you can with the personnel you have, and that's why we, we had people there at Synergy. And, and I think, again, lockdown, evacuation, um, either way could have. During that time, did you guys lose him while he was doing what he was doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, next, we're going to go with you, sir. Earlier yesterday, you said that it was a person that, that you knew who it was. And was there a reason why you knew who it was? Did something happen like earlier that day that you were tipped off on? Because I, you said something <coughs> yesterday that it was a guy who you knew him, that you were looking for. You know, it was a certain guy that you were looking for. No, I, I think maybe you've mis misunderstood what I was saying yesterday. What I was saying yesterday was that when the suspect was down, we had a good idea of who he was at that time, um, and that we just had not had totally identified him yet. That's why we wouldn't release that until we had an absolute stone cold identification on him. Uh, that's what I was saying. Last question, uh, two-part question uh, for Christopher with FBI. Uh, you guys have a team over in West Odessa right now responding to a home search warrant. They've met into the home for the I can tell you we're executing a federally authorized search warrant at this point in time. Um, as, we, as we also described, there's over 15 crime scenes. So frankly, we're all over the place here in Odessa uh, with the DPS, the Rangers, and the Odessa police. So I would say all day today, probably all day tomorrow, you're going to see significant police and FBI activity throughout the city. And Governor, when it comes to you saying that you've been to too many of these, you're quoted as saying, I am tired of people dying. Based off what the FBI is saying statistically that they're responding to these kind of situations every two weeks, what can you say to the people of Texas that you might have to be in front of them again in two weeks from now as the call for action regarding gun control grows? What can you say to the people to calm down? First, uh, uh, from the response side, uh, at the state level, uh, we have a sense of urgency uh, to arrive at solutions, uh, working together with the legislature, working together with our uh, law enforcement officers and federal partners. And uh, we are working quickly to hammer out some solutions, to put some solutions uh, on the table. Second, uh, importantly, is the way that our law enforcement responds. Uh, they work 24-7. Uh, to make sure that their communities are safe as possible. Uh, and you can see the dedication that they have, uh, and they will be doing the same to replicate that effort in every community across the entire state of Texas. Thanks, guys. we got to run. Thank you. This concludes our press conference. Thank you all for coming.